In this series I've started to build a model of an all-terrain vehicle capable of exploring even the harshest of alien planets. Now it's time to start working on the steering. Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome back to Darling Borough Sci-Fi Builds. In my last video I started to build the wheels and chassis of my extraterrestrial all-terrain vehicle or ET ATV as I've coined it and I mentioned that I was going to look into articulation for the steering of the vehicle. Having finished building the front and back pieces of the chassis it was then time to connect them. My initial thought before thinking about the steering was to connect them using some wooden stirring sticks. However I then had to rethink my design. I drilled some holes in some triangular pieces of wood that I had left over from a, another project. I decided that these would make a perfect articulated connection point. However, I then had to decide whereabouts on the model I wanted to actually include the pivot. As I roughly dry fitted the wheels onto both ends of the chassis, I then started to play around adding different lengths of wood to see whereabouts I wanted the extension to be. Having played around with different configurations, I decided that the pivot point should be closer to the front cab or tractor of the vehicle, leaving a slightly longer trailer instead. I extended the trailer using some wooden sticks and including the wheels, this left the vehicle at roughly two foot or 60 centimeters in length. <gasps> now when it comes to building science fiction based models, I'll be honest, I don't tend to work to any particular scale. However, when it came to this model, I decided that I did want to work out how big it would be in real life. One scale I am familiar with is 1 to 76 scale or double O gauge in Model Railway. And the reason for that is obviously I have a Model Railway channel as well, Darling Borough Model Railway. There should be a link up there. Check it out after you've watched this video as well. I decided to work out what the vehicle length would be if I was working to 1 to 76 or double O gauge. And I worked out that the chassis of the vehicle at that scale would be over 107 foot long or 32 meters in length and that was pretty big. Now to put things into perspective if you look at a standard articulated lorry that works out at around about 16 and a half meters so it's literally twice the size and I thought that yeah even though it's an alien planet exploring all-terrain vehicle that would be far too big. So I looked at other scales as well. Another scale that I recognise is 1 to 48 scale, which I believe is used by a lot of model makers as well. And at that measurement, it worked out at around about 68 foot or 20 metres in length, which is just slightly larger than an articulated lorry. Another scale that I am familiar with is 1 to 18 scale. Now, anyone who has bought any kind of die cast model cars or perhaps a remote control vehicle may recognize that scale and that works out at around about 7.7 .7 meters or 25 foot in length which I think is more acceptable. Now what does that mean? On the grand scheme of things not a lot obviously I'm going to be still building the model as I would anyway but it's just something to take into account if you are building a model how big it's going to be if it is in real life. Now, if you are interested I can put together a small video on different scales when it comes to model making, uh, just let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you would be interested in watching. And also, if you are a model maker again yourself, then let me know if you work at any particular scale yourself and the reason for that as well. Forgetting about length for a bit, I focused on creating the pivot point for the articulated joint of the vehicle. Rather than just gluing the triangular pieces to the chassis, I measured and cut out some slots so that it would fit together nicely and create a solid foundation for the vehicle. Once I had filed the attachments down and dry fitted the pieces into place, I then used copious amounts of super glue to stick the pieces together. Thank you. 
using some bolts and some washers I bolted it all together and I was very happy with the overall result. The chassis worked really well, the articulation worked and it allowed a certain amount of steering but not enough to cause any issues. Once the chassis had been bolted together I was very pleased with it and decided to start adding some extra detail to the underneath of the vehicle. Returning to my bits of broken drones, I decided to use parts of the bodywork from the drones as the undercarriage of the vehicle. I felt that the drone bodies themselves were absolutely perfect to use as the undercarriage as the grills and the details added a lot of visual interest to the vehicle. I trimmed some of the parts down to make them fit and then super glued them into place. In order to cover up any of the remaining gaps, I decided to use styrene. Now I'll be honest, I've never worked with styrene before. However, watching quite a few YouTube channels that have recommended it, I felt that it would be a nice and easy material to work with. And yes, I was right. It's a lovely material to work with. All I needed to do was lightly score one side and then snap it in place to provide a perfect straight edge cut. In order to stick the styrene sheets onto the bottom of the chassis, I simply used some more CA glue or super glue and this worked absolutely perfectly. I also wanted to make sure that I could get some nice round edges and this was very easy as well. Working around the drone body, I also wanted to fill in the gaps and realized that gently heating the styrene allowed it to become pliable and easy to shape into place. In order to make sure that the wheels were going to work, I decided to finally stick them together. Although the super glue was acceptable, I decided to try using some Tamiya extra thin cement to stick the wheels together as well. Having watched several YouTube videos on working with various plastics, this type of acetate based adhesive was recommended by many model makers, so I thought I'd give it a go. The results were fairly impressive. Both of the plastic wheel elements appeared to fuse together. Using this type of adhesive on plastics is a technique and a material that I will be trying again in the future. Rather than gluing the suspension arms onto the wheels and the wheel hubs, I decided that I wanted to keep these as removable pieces. When I came to paint it, it would make it easier. So I drilled some holes and used some tiny screws to hold it all in place. I also gave a few drops of super glue to the wires from the LEDs in the suspension arms just to keep them in place. It was then time to look at attaching the wheel to the chassis of the vehicle. I decided that the best way to attach the wheels to the vehicle was to use a large bolt and run it through the holes of the suspension arms and also at the end of the chassis. I found some end caps which I felt would work really well. Unfortunately, they were slightly too thick to fit in the holes of the suspension arm. Using a drill, I carefully increased the size of some of the holes in the suspension arms so that the end caps would fit in place nice and snug. Whilst increasing the connection points in the suspension arms, I decided to also create the connection points in the chassis itself. Now this did involve drilling some holes into the lollipop sticks, which I'll be honest, I wish I'd done before I glued the chassis together. I decided that in order to try and reduce any damage to the lollipop sticks, because obviously they were only 
thin pieces of wood, I started with a small drill and worked my way up until I found a drill that was the correct size. Unfortunately, however, I did still cause some damage to the chassis and ended up damaging the ends of the lollipop sticks. However, all was not lost as I was able to reinforce the damaged lollipop sticks with some metal washers. Once everything was in place, the last thing I wanted to do was just do a last quick test of all of the LEDs and the suspension arms just to make sure I hadn't broken anything. I fed the wires from the LEDs up through the body and clipped them all together, attached them to a power supply unit and everything lit up and looked absolutely awesome. I really can't wait to see this model in its full glory. My initial worry was that with the wheels extending out the front and the rear of the vehicle, with an articulated point in the middle, the vehicle was going to become very unstable. However, once I'd bolted it all together, I was actually reassuringly surprised how stable the vehicle was. After playing around with some poses, I realised there was actually a lot of opportunity for this vehicle. Not only could the wheels be raised and lowered, but the vehicle was able to rotate and turn. And as the suspension arms were completely independent of each other, you could angle the vehicle as required. In my mind, I also realised that the vehicle could potentially be capable of climbing some incredibly steep terrain, such as almost vertical walls. Now, if you are enjoying this project so far, then please hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any further progress on this project. Obviously, I will have to make sure that the chassis actually looks like metal. And if you're wondering how I'm going to be doing that, check out my video here. In the meantime, hasta la vista. I'll be back.